Well, we're headed back to the desert, this time to celebrate the Thanksgiving holiday. The quads and bikes are loaded, and we're meeting up with friends to ride some trails we've never been on before. Lyle's happy with his pop-up camper, and it's serving him well. The landscape has changed from valley oak to Joshua trees, and Red Rock Canyon is just over there, used as a movie set backdrop for films such as Westworld, Planet of the Apes, and Jurassic Park. We'll set up base camp near Dove Springs in the Jawbone Betterbrett OHV area, where hundreds of miles of open desert and mountain riding awaits us. The rest of the group have arrived, and base camp has been set up in this desolate but starkly beautiful desert setting. And the adventure begins. Okay, you feel those two rings? Yeah. Okay, we'll stick that in there between the two rings. Now you got it. That's good. Okay, now, now you got to split the two rings. You feel it? Yeah. And then you stick it in between. Yeah. Feel for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Now pull it. Uh, now cinch it up to get a, to get it to the right tightness on your chin. And I never use that snap, but l let's have a look at it. Let's see how you did it. That is all correct. You're all set. So next time you'll know. There you had it. Gonna go for a ride? Yeah. Buddy. Yeah. Make sure you just stay where we can see you, so just go up and down this road or around here, okay? I was thinking of going over there. We can go out this road and make a right and keep keep camp close in sight. On this first ride of the trip, we'll climb up off of the desert floor and up into these mountains to check out some cell towers up on one of the highest peaks. The Mojave extends from the Sierra Nevada range to the Colorado Plateau, and its canyons, mountains, and mesas are riddled with hundreds of abandoned mines, homesteads, and old decommissioned rock-walled military outposts. Later in the video, we'll be exploring one of each of these places. But today will be a good test run to make sure all the equipment is running well and to get a little taste of the longer trail rides to come.
We begin this hour with new information on the crash of a Navy jet in Kern County's high desert today. The F-18 Super Hornet went down this morning northeast of Mojave. Our Karen Hua has been at the crash site all day and files this report. Shortly after 10 this morning, a Navy fighter jet crashed near this historic rock formation known as Robber's Roost. Fortunately, you can see we're in a remote desert area of East Kern, so there were no building damages or injuries on the ground. We have a smoke column visible from the station near Robber's Roost. Where there's smoke, there were flames and an F-18. Copy, start that direction. Sounds like it may be a plane down. We're taking a few pulls now. The jet was on a routine training flight from Naval Air Station Lemoore in Fresno County. It was flying south of the China Lake Naval Air Weapons Station when there was a mishap. The pilot ejected safely before the plane crashed. Kern Supervisor Mick Gleason found out about the incident during this morning's Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, just had a major aircraft accident in uh, China Lake. I don't know what's going on. The F-18 Super Hornet is a supersonic, single-seat combat jet designed as both a fighter and attack aircraft. Multiple agencies came to help contain the small fire caused by the crash, and they're now working together to investigate. Now, CHP is turning everyone around at the intersection of Highway 178 and Highway 14, so please, you're asked to avoid the area if you can. In Inyo Kern, Karen Hua, 17 News. Today, we're setting out to try to find the recent Navy F-18 crash site. All we have to go on is the news footage that was filmed from Highway 178. So we know it crashed pretty close to the highway. We're plugging in our best guess GPS coordinates and hoping to stumble onto the burn scar. But the desert is a vast place, and we're unlikely to find it at ground level. So we send up the drone for an aerial view. And we find it. Fighter jet, just melted pieces.
Looks cool. Joshua trees, the largest of the yuccas, grow only in the Mojave Desert. They got their biblical name from Mormon settlers crossing the Mojave in the early 1900s. Their distinctive appearance is amazing, prehistoric, or maybe otherworldly. The road we're traveling today is bounded on both sides by them and I can see how the settlers regarded them as uniquely guiding them through the desert where only scrub brush should grow. We're headed to an abandoned talc mine that I'm told also has an otherworldly appearance. Talc, the softest mineral, was mined not only for its use in the manufacture of talcum powder, but as the base ingredient of many other cosmetics. However, its principal use was that of a paint extender and also as an insulator in electrical components, as well as a myriad of other uses of the Industrial Revolution. I don't know, I think they're not. Dead end? I think they're man-made because look, there's all Definitely man-made. Looks like it will be down there. Looks like it does get steep, though. It does get steep, huh? <laughs> it's like... Let's check out this one. Another one? Look He's in the kid again. Yeah. This is kind of what I think the moon would look like. You think the moon has uh, tunnels like this or caves? I mean, like it's all white. I, I think the moon might look like this. It's possible. That's what I think. Like, like Probably that. not, though. <laughs> the, moon, the moon's pretty featureless except for craters. <laughs> Go out to the entrance again. have a lot of impact from meteors. back on the trail, this time to explore a couple more desert curiosities. 
Last night around the campfire, we were told the story of a crusty old miner named Burrow Schmidt, who spent a good part of his lifetime hand digging a half mile tunnel through solid rock. Along the way, we'll stop at Bickle Camp, a museum of sorts, preserved by the friends of Walter Bickle. Another crusty old miner, Bickle was a multi-talented individual, possessing knowledge in the earth sciences, as well as being a capable machinist and inventor who never threw a scrap of metal away. to get their arms caught, caught in there, huh? Yeah, Carrie said she got her arm all the way up to her elbow caught in an electric one. My, ours was a crank, hand crank, and so you'd get the, get the towel started and then you'd crank it, and then, or a shirt, you'd get it started, and then you'd come hang it on the line. Farmer Bodie. Whatever you pick up, put it right back where you found it. Yep. I found it in the car. Okay, put it back in the car then. Small cars. Teeny, huh? Yeah. I think you could fit in there and drive that one. Mm -hmm. Look how sparkly this one is. And the crystals in there? It's silver. Which crystals in? This looks industry. I don't know what it is. Crystal look. look at this here. girl. Yeah. And this one has some type of uh, green. These look like arrowheads. Arrowhead rocks. They do. Look at this one. Are you guys the docents of this tunnel and you're collecting donations? I got a nickel. Well, we'll let you go for free since you're filming. Oh, okay. <laughs> Going to find gold. Would you think it was a giant tunnel? I knew. Oh no, this is a little tunnel. What's it like on the other side? I mean, just oh, looked oh, like this. No, there's a little landing. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! I don't remember. No. Yeah, I think you can see everything. Just make sure you don't hit your head. Yeah, here. <laughs> I hit my head right here. Steve says. Sure. I just hit my head. Oh, there's a little Going through.
Burrow Schmidt Tunnel is an interesting curiosity. Starting in 1900, William Burrow Schmidt dug this half-mile tunnel through solid granite bedrock, all by himself, using only a pick and shovel and dynamite. It took him 38 years to complete. Facing a dangerous ridge between his claim and the ore smelter in Mojave, Schmidt vowed never to haul his ore on his two burrows, Jake and Jenny, down that dangerous back trail. So what started out as a logical plan turned into an obsession. He hauled 5,800 tons of rock out of the tunnel, using only a wheelbarrow and later an ore cart. In the end, he never used the tunnel to transport ore. He sold the tunnel to another miner and moved away. Go 20. It's been a fun day, but time has come to start the 30 mile ride back to camp. We have one more day of riding before Thanksgiving, so tomorrow we're going way up into the mountains to a place called McIver's Cabin. Well, here we are arriving back at camp. Desert camping is primitive camping and not regulated in any way. With dispersed camping like this, you need to be self-sufficient and bring along everything you need for your stay. You have the freedom to set up however you like and pretty much go and do whatever you like. Now along with that comes the responsibility to respect the land and respect your neighbors. Most riding groups will give each other plenty of space and camp far away from each other. passes close to another camp, you need to show some courtesy and slow down and not dust their camp. The rules are simple here. Have lots of fun, just don't be an idiot, and you should be fine. I guess that would apply to life in general. Appreciate the world we live in.
He's already burned through it. Well, that's fast. <laughs> Morning has broken at our desert camp to a spectacular sunrise and there's a cold wind blowing out of the north. November nights in the Mojave were always cold and it froze last night. At 3,000 feet, we are camping in high desert and everyone is enjoying the first warming rays of sunlight. If there are clouds in the area, Sunrises and sunsets in the desert can be breathtakingly beautiful. You just need to get up early enough to witness them. We need to fuel up and inspect the vehicles in preparation for today's ride. Some of the group are riding dirt bikes and others quads. And then there are the larger side-by-sides that hold more people and cargo. It'll be interesting to see how this mix of ATVs work out on the steep and rocky climb up to McIver's cabin. At 6,600 feet, we'll be getting into the conifers and a very different landscape. Up here. Some uh, pancakes. 
pancakes. Put on a pot of cowboy coffee. Cowboy coffee, I can do that. And this is a cocoa butter, if your hands are cracked. Ugh. Smells like good beer. Open her up. It's nice in here. When you're riding a trail, new and unknown to you, and the vehicle in front of you suddenly stops and the driver climbs out of his vehicle, or there's a lot of discussion going on, there's usually some sort of problem ahead. The trail could be blocked by something, or someone crashed, or in this case, a steep and slippery hill that'll require technical riding skills to get down. I think he'll be fine. Lauren's not going to roll it. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go forward low. I'm gonna go forward low. But if I start sliding, then I'm just gonna have to give it gas. What? No. Or is that Lyle? Lyle. Hell, it's probably worse walking down it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't fun walking up it. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> Did you do that for low, Dion? I did. Because I was thinking about high because, you know, if it really started slipping, then I would just yeah, give it. Yeah, when you were coming down, like there's a fine line between locking the rear too much, but you were controlling it. When it starts to come out, you let off. Yeah. Straighten it back really out. going to go up it, huh? I don't know. I think.
have any problem because you can kind of like you had a great controlled skid coming down it looked great how'd mine look yours was good <laughs> you get you got it some gas on the bottom it looked good yeah yeah, that was easy! Piece of cake! Well, it's late afternoon and we're headed over to a brewery off of California 14. Should be barely enough time to check it out, have a quick one, and then throttle back down the power line road before it gets too dark. As far as dark beer goes... I had a lobotomy box, and I had a blackout stout tomorrow. Okay, well, why don't you give me one of those? Yeah, you need me. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching our trip as much as I've enjoyed presenting it to you. So long for now, and as always, from my family to yours, 